3D animation is an ever-growing industry. The genre continues to rise in popularity as it can be adapted for families and mature audiences. As popularity continues to rise for 3D animation, so does the need for new animators and studios. There is no greater time to be a 3D animator than right now. We are in Focus Film School, and today we're here to talk about the history of 3D animation. Have you ever wondered, how did animation go from this to this? Well, that's what we're here to find out. We'll be doing a survey of 3D animation history and how the animation industry went through a series of unprecedented changes in just a couple of key decades. We'll tell you about the surprising involvement of the aerospace company Boeing in the beginnings of animation, not to mention how Star Wars had a major hand in kicking off the feasibility of 3D animation in Hollywood. But first, let's get the foundations down. What exactly is 3D animation? Animation, as an art form, is the rapid displaying of still images in sequence. Each image differs slightly from the one before, and when they appear quickly in succession, it creates movement. Most often, the frames go by at a rate of 24 frames per second, closely mirroring the speed of movement that we perceive in real life. In 3D animation specifically, characters and environments are three-dimensional. Animators use pixels and work to give objects weight and timing. And sometimes, blueprints are created from scanning real-world physical objects. In this case, instead of looking flat, 3D animation gives off the feel of realism, using the same level of depth and detail our eyes see on a daily basis. Now that we've covered the basics, let's get into exactly how this multi-million dollar industry first began. The birth of 3D animation. In the early 1900s, a unique and never before seen style of animation came into being. It was called claymation. True to its name, claymation consisted of the modeling of clay into objects and characters resembling that of real life. Often, the clay was segmented so that not only could characters move, but so could their limbs, heads, and torsos. This enabled early animations to take a photo, move one piece of a clay creation, take a photo, and repeat. This is exactly the method of stop-motion filmmaking. One of the well-known and breakthrough claymation films of the time was called The Sculptor's Welsh Rare Bit Dream a trick film created by Edison Manufacturing in 1908. But once it had been invented, claymation didn't really take off, with challenges like the difficulty of clay sculpting and the time-consuming nature of stop-motion factoring into it. For now, the future of 3D animation stayed largely unknown. But then came the 70s boom. The re-emergence of 3D animation as a popular tool all started with the Boeing Man or Bowman in the early 1960s. It was the creation of William Fetter, an employee at Boeing. His job there was to create 3D models using computers to animate and design these models for the company. This figure specifically was meant to simulate how a human would sit and move in the cockpit of an airplane. Fetter would go on to create short videos of these rigged pilots, using them to understand ideal methods of cockpit design. With his work known as the first form of 3D moving images, Fetter became credited as the father of computer-generated 3D animation. His work led to a myriad of other new creations, all between the 60s and 70s. Frederick Park, a computer graphics academic created the first 3D model of a human face. As a computer scientist at the University of Utah, he produced a short film entitled Face and Body Parts in 1974, showing computer-generated expressions such as happiness and shock and the movement the face undergoes from one expression to the next. This would go on to pave the way for the complex facial animations we see in film and TV today. On the heels of Park's work came several other milestones. The first was Edwin Catmull's creation of the first 3D computer-generated hand, 
Next, Cat Mole and Park came together to work on Future World, a major motion picture released in 1976. This set a precedent as the first film to ever incorporate 3D computer-generated animations. This 3D animation technology, once available and seen only in top university research facilities, reached audiences for the very first time, marking a pivotal turning point in the animation industry. The Entry into Hollywood Now, by the 1980s, 3D animation was finally gaining momentum and finding its way into the film industry. The release of Future World certainly played a major part, but it was George Lucas' Star Wars films that gave 3D animation the final push it needed to cement itself in Hollywood. 1977 saw the release of Star Wars Episode IV, A New Hope. Lucas, along with the newly formed visual effects company Industrial Light & Magic, used 3D animation mostly in the realm of creating enhanced visuals for models, puppets, and sets. What Star Wars started was continued by Tron, a landmark film for 3D animation. Released in 1982, it featured computer-generated animation. Instead of incorporating bits and pieces of animation here and there, this was the first time animation was at the forefront of a film, used extensively and recurrently. But what exactly allowed for this explosion of 3D animation in the 80s? The simplest answer is that the technology finally caught up. From the first time 3D animation had come onto the scene until now, nearly 80 years had gone by, allowing for the rudimentary principles of animation to be refined again and again. Now, inventions in 3D animations were permitted greater complexity. For instance, recursive ray tracing, a rendering technique, was introduced by J. Turner Witted. With this tool, animated work began to move closer and closer to realism. At around the same time, in 1982, Autodesk released its computer-aided design software called AutoCAD. This not only widened the possibilities of software-supported 3D animation, but increased the accessibility of the medium and thereby its popularity. As the 80s wrapped up, 3D animation had become something Hollywood could not ignore. Its commercial success was undeniable, as was its growing viability for use in a wide range of settings and genres. And that's it for part one of this two-part series on the history of 3D animation. Next time, we'll take a closer look at the evolution of 3D animation and how it became the powerhouse medium it is today. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to our channel and follow In Focus Film School on Instagram, Facebook, and all our other social platforms. If you are interested in studying 3D animation, look for a link to our 3D animation course in the description of this video to learn more and speak to an admissions advisor. Thanks for watching. See you again soon.